British Columbia was built on the logging industry. Dating back to the late 1700s before the arrival of European settlers, the First Nations people cut down trees to use for homes, canoes, tools, and even their clothing. In 1778, when Captain James Cook anchored along the coast of Vancouver Island, him and his sailors cut down coastal Douglas fir trees to build masts for their sailboats. From there, the felling, logging, and exporting of trees along the west coast of Canada slowly began to expand. The Hudson's Bay Company would build the first sawmill in BC at Fort Victoria in 1847, and soon after throughout Vancouver Island, other mills were built in Nanaimo, Alberni Valley, and the small town known as Yubo, BC. Founded originally as a sawmill town in 1913, known at the time as Cottonwood, BC, Yubo gained its name from a combination of the original mill owners, Mr. Yount and Mr. Bolton. Throughout the 1900s, Yubo would quickly grow into how it sits today. With the logging industry taking off in the mid-1920s, this small town would gain more and more attention from those wanting in on this booming industry. Come the 1950s, Yubo had developed into a complete town with everything from schools, a bank, and even a bowling alley. From then until now, this town would unfortunately slowly decline economically. And although the booming years of the small town have taken a step back in recent years, Yubo and those that call it home stand tall today along the north shore of Couchin Lake in Vancouver Island's beautiful Couchin Valley. channel um i still hate doing these intros but angela says i should do more vlog style videos anyways it's early november i have this little caterpillar thing going on my face right now that she loves so much uh, um we are currently in lake couchin planned out a day to hit like minimum three places to vlog and film and stuff uh ended up getting stuck in the bush and Being my classic self and getting caught up in things. Potentially put videos coming? of that. Where? Right there. Oh. Oh. Momentary pause for a man walking. Yeah. I'm gonna start walking. We're back. I'm gonna start walking through I'm just of all places something it's I super awkward. going for a walk while he's having a beer and he got nervous in front of the camera. <laughs> so he stopped. Um, Anyways. Yeah, like I was saying, got stuck in the bush, blah blah blah, blah classic moment. And then classic today ended up like coming to this one. It's cool to just show you on this camera. It's more has to be from above. So we're at this abandoned uh, old go-kart track right along the lake. I like this place because I found it accidentally and those are my favorite places to find. Like if you go off-roading and stuff and you haven't come across a cabin or something cool like that, a really nice river spot, camping spot, that is my favorite part of all this. And with this spot, I was looking for something else that's in the area on Google Earth and I just happened to be going around the lake and I saw what looked like a race car track from above, Google Earth View, and I was like, that's cool. So I ended up researching it, blah, 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 found out that this land that's on was originally part of Timber West logging, and there was a, a mill here, a sawmill, which, which closed in 2001. There's at one point three mills, I can't talk right now, there's 1.3 three mills along a lake, and uh, this was the last close, like I said, in 2001. Following that, this island go-kart group, uh, they lost their spot at, I think they were at Western Speedway or Saratoga, one of those. Um, they lost their what's the word? contract. They lost their contract license, one of those things, at that spot. So they reached out to Timber West or whoever owned this land once the, the mill shut down. They asked to put a go-kart track here. And, did and like 
listening to Save Your Drone videos. It looks pretty cool. It would have been sick to see it in its heyday. Now, why do you think it climbed? Um, that will be later on in the video, Angela. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I, I don't know. I ruined everything. I can't, no, I can't think right now, but it will. I'll research that. We'll find out. I, re I remember reading it, but I forget now. But the sunset looks cool behind Yeah, us. we left at 9 a.m. It's now 6 p.m. and I'm starving, so. Uh, my fault. <laughs> um, yeah, so there won't be much to show from the ground because it's kind of aerial footage to fully see this place. I'll try to show something. All throughout here are these different arrows that I assume are part of the go kart track, like telling drivers which way to go, but at the same time, they seem kind of out of the way of the rest of all the track that I wonder if it might be left over from when the mill was still here. Huh. Interesting, yeah, yeah, interesting. Like previously stated, we are losing daylight, but I just want to show a little bit that we could got a bend right here and then kind of look through all the different cars and not all the different home tracks like through a little pit crew seven six five four three two one you know how the alphabet goes which way do i go around the circle yeah yeah I mean, that's about it. Like I said, there's what is that in the bush? Anyway, um, there's not much really to show here other than the drone stuff, so I'll just send to that. Cool, bye. Just outside the downtown core of Yubo sits a vacant area with what remains of two completely separate times in Yubo history. In the early 1900s, the Empire Lumber Company secured large blocks of timber around the small towns of Kaikus and Yubo, including the current Yubo town site. The ENN railway was pushed through to Yubo in 1912 and logging commenced the following year. A small mill known as the Cottonwood Mill, or the Medina Mill, would be built and would ship its first load of lumber in 1918. With the completion of the Canadian Northern Railway in 1928, Yubo was now able to transport lumber to the outside market. During the same year, Empire Lumber was taken over by industrial timber mills, which used the old portable mill to cut the materials to build a brand new all-electric sawmill near the original site. This new and improved mill would open in 1929, along with an eight-mile stretch of road connecting Yubo with the larger community of Lake Cowichan. For many years to come, the mill would be the driving force behind Yubo's economy and where many that called it home went to work every day. In 1988, the sawmill was purchased by Fletcher Challenge and later by Timber West. It's for only 12 years and on a brisk January evening, men rushed out of the mill at the end of their shifts to hang up their orange hard hats in a wooden cloakroom as many of them and their fathers had done for decades. Other workers arriving for shift change, sturdy lunch boxes in hand, to start one of their final nights on the job before the 72 year old plant, which shut down a few days later. On January 26, 2001, the mill would be demolished along the shores of Lake Cowden, putting 220 employees out of work. With one door closing for the small town, another would soon open. A year after the mill was torn down, a local Vancouver Island go-kart racing group would make a temporary home on the site of what used to be the beloved sawmill. The huge slab of concrete and its central island location perfectly met the needs of the capital city kart club. They approached the forest industry giant about a short-term lease and then sold themselves to the cash-strapped town of Yubo as a much-needed economic opportunity. 
Some residents immediately objected to the noise, while others saw the club's presence as a much-needed boost in a town that had lost its major employer. The asphalted acre on the north shore of Lake Cowichan became a temporary home for the club. When its track at Cassidy Speedway, Selton Enamel was forced to shut down in 1999, after a citizens group discovered the property had never properly been zoned for a racetrack. For a few years, this racetrack would bring a small following to U-Boat 10 weekends out of the year. Boasting one of the most gorgeous settings of any racetrack in Canada, rows of motorhomes, car haulers, and pop-up awnings would line the former mill workers' parking lot and form a miniature mobile village during those times. The life of the go-kart track was cut short when Capital City Kart Club folded in 2005 and Cowichan Valley Regional District denied its permit to continue to race a new boat. Now nearly 20 years later, two completely separate settings have taken center stage on this acre of land and both have brought people and money to the small town of Yupo, British Columbia. From its earliest days in 1913 when the Empire Lumber Company built the first lumber mill to the short few years of hearing each class of go-kart and their own distinctive tone, and up until the present day, the community of Yupo has survived and in one way or another has always prospered. Just <laughs> 